Greetings, Alexander Sokolov here. Today I will tell you the sad story, which became a landmark in the development of such a field of medicine as human organ transplantation. In 1984, a terminal patient was brought to the medical center of Loma Linda, California. This was the newborn Stephanie Faye Bockler. The little girl had the hyperplastic left heart syndrome, which means the left side of her heart was severely underdeveloped. Children with this condition typically do not survive the first two weeks of their lives. The parents were facing the choice of having their child die at the hospital or at home. Only a heart transplant could save the child. Such surgeries were already being performed in 1984, but it was practically impossible to find a donor for a newborn. In addition, Faye's mother did not have medical insurance, and the heart transplant procedure, even if a donor was found, would have cost $250,000. Because of all of this, the pediatric surgeon Leonard Bailey had suggested a last measure solution. For seven years, he had been researching the possibility of xenotransplantation, in other words, the possibility of transplanting animal organs into human patients. He had conducted over 160 animal procedures, for example, transplanting a sheep's heart into a goat. None of his animal patients had lived for longer than six months. Nonetheless, Bailey did not lose hope. He discussed Faye's situation with her parents at length and was able to obtain their consent. As a result, they agreed to the procedure. All that remained was to find a donor. One had to be chosen from the six young baboons available to the Lama Linded Center. The animal, first of all, had to be of the right size for the little girl, who weighed only 2 kilos and 200 grams. In addition, there was a second serious consideration. The child had a rare blood type, hard to find among baboons, something like less than 1% probability. None of these baboons had the matching blood type. There was no way to avoid serious complications related to the rejection of the donor organ. It would have occurred regardless, but considering the blood type and compatibility, it would have been much more serious. Nonetheless, the doctors conducted a series of tests. They would take the blood and tissue samples from the little girl and would test their potential compatibility on the baboons to see which animal would have the least rejection reaction. They were able to find a nine-month-old female baboon, nicknamed Goobers, which was chosen as the donor. As a side detail, when later, during a radio interview, a journalist asked Bailey why he did not use a chimp as a donor. Because evolutionary speaking, chimps are much more closely related to humans. Bailey had responded that he did not believe in evolution. In his scientific journal publications, Regarding the matter, Bailey had phrased his responses more cautiously. Yes, chimps are more closely related to humans. He used the term homologous. However, there was no chimp donor available at the time of the procedure. As an aside, Bailey himself was a Seventh-day Adventist. On October 26, 1984, the little girl's condition began deteriorating. She was roughly 12 days old the hospital team began preparing for the procedure. The girl's heart was removed and replaced with a baboon one. At 11.35, that new heart began beating on its own. The surgical team worked at its limit. The immunologist who had taken part in the procedure recalled that people were crying in the surgery room. The university maintained the real name and the age of the patient in confidence. However, the information was leaked to the press, and the procedure became a sensation. Faye was talked about and featured on national television. Hundreds of people sent her cards, flowers, money, good wishes. Others were outraged by the moral aspects of such a procedure. 
Were the doctors able to perform a miracle? During the first few days, the child's condition began improving. She was taken off IVL and began eating on her own. Bailey was giving interviews, in which he expressed the hope that in three months the child would be able to go home, that she will survive her first birthday, and possibly even her 20th one. He hoped that soon baboon organ transplants would become more commonplace than human ones. Other doctors mused that soon, possibly, special donor baboon farms would appear. There was a certain level of euphoria from the potential medical advancements. Unfortunately, premature one. In two weeks, Faye started showing the first signs of transplant rejection. The child began growing weaker, her condition worsened. The doctors were forced to administer large doses of immunosuppressors. As the result, the child's kidneys failed. On day 21, despite all the efforts of the doctors, Faye passed away. Altogether, after the procedure, Faye had lived for 21 days. That's two weeks longer than any human with an animal heart transplant. But this was of little consolation. Once the first shock had passed, outraged questions were voiced. The most outcry came from the animal rights activists, who marched around the hospital with posters in hand. They claimed that there were two victims in this horrific experiment, a little girl and an innocent little baboon, which had died needlessly. Others wanted to know how the doctor was able to obtain the parents' consent. Did he accurately explain to them the risks, as well as the fact that no human had ever survived such a procedure before? And that was true. Starting in 1905, there had been 33 attempts to transplant baboon organs to human patient, and all 33 had ended in failure. Did the doctor himself adequately understand all the risks? Did he have any hope of success? Or had he simply experimented at the child's expense? That became a legal question. Was the procedure therapeutic or merely experimental in nature? Bailey himself explained the failure to be the result of the blood type incompatibility. He stated that he did everything within his power to save the child. If there had been a human donor located during the 20 days prior to the transplant and the search went on during that entire period, Faya would have been saved. In that sense, 20 days is a reasonable amount of time. He insisted that xenotransplantation potential requires further in-depth research, that the field has great potential. However, he himself never again conducted such experiments. This tragic story served to attract public attention to the problem of transplant organ availability for children. At his university, Leonard Bailey had developed a very effective pediatric cardiotransplantation program involving transplantation of human hearts. His first successful surgery took place in 1985, followed by hundreds of successful procedures. Today, some of Bailey's patients have grown children of their own. This does not make the story of little Faye any less tragic. I must add that today, in 2020, xenotransplantation or transplantation of animal organs to humans remains at its experimental stage. There remains the hope that in the near future, specialists will be able to achieve success and save the lives of children in similar situations. I would like to thank the Semyon Stepanovich Kichenko City Regional Library of Petergof for the use of their facilities. I thank the Sci Team recording crew. Presenting to you was Alexander Sokolov, and may the force of true science remain with you.